Let me read to you a passage from the fourth chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 38 to 44. It's the Gospel for Wednesday of the 22nd week in Ordinary Time. St. Luke writes, Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. When the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them, and would not allow them to speak, because they knew he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him, and when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. That's from Luke chapter 4, verses 38 to 44. It speaks of Jesus, the Son of God. You know, our passage today is from the Gospel of St. Luke. And one of the distinctive features of this Gospel is the extensive infancy narrative it contains. The narrative of the infancy of Christ. There is twice as much given on the infancy in Luke than that provided in the Gospel of St. Matthew. And it is not hard to divine that Mary is the principal source, whether directly or indirectly. The birth, the mission and the titles of Jesus are introduced by the angel Gabriel in his address to Mary in the infancy narrative. The angel announces to her that she is to conceive a son whose name will be Jesus, he will be great. What is to be observed is that the first of the titles the angel gives to him is precisely the Son of the Most High. The second is that of Messiah King, ruling over God's people in an eternal kingdom. While the chosen people expected the coming of the Messiah, the first and foremost thing which the angel announces is that Jesus will be the Son of the Highest One. At Mary's puzzlement, in view of her virginity, he emphasizes the point again. The Holy One to be born will be called Son of God. Luke chapter 1 verses 32 to 35. The words of Elizabeth a little later, inspired by the Holy Spirit, may be seen as a vague allusion to this exalted title. She says, How is it that I am visited by the Mother of my Lord? Christ's title of Son of God came in the first instance from the angel Gabriel speaking on God's behalf it was a revelation from heaven delivered to Mary, his mother. This same revelation is made once again in the infancy narrative, and this time it comes from the lips of Jesus Christ himself. At the end of their three days' search, Mary and Joseph found the boy Jesus in the temple with the doctors. His reply to their exclamation is profoundly revealing, and doubtless is the reason why Mary reported it and why Luke recorded it. Why were you seeking me? Jesus said to them. Did you not know that I had to be about my father's matters? From his earliest years, Christ had the same consciousness of being Son of God that he displayed and revealed during his public ministry. Jesus spoke of God as his own Father, and his last breath was a final cry to God under this distinctive title. In Luke chapter 23 verse 46. This then is the principal thing about Jesus Christ. He is not the Son of God because he is the Messiah, but if anything he is the Messiah because he is the Son of God. His divine sonship is the greatest and most fundamental thing about Jesus of Nazareth. And it is the point where there is a parting of ways. The title Sons of God was not uncommon in the Old Testament. It referred at times to angels, at times to human judges or rulers, at times to the ruler of Israel, at times to Israel as a people. It was a title used in the pagan world too. 
but Christ's use of the title was utterly unique. Before Abraham ever was, he, he said, I am. And again, I and the Father are one, he claimed. In the pagan world, in the year 42 BC, Julius Caesar was formally deified as the divine Julius. His adopted son Octavian, better known by the title Augustus, given to him 15 years later in 27 BC, thus became known as the son of the divine Julius, or simply the son of the divine one, because of being the adopted son of Julius Caesar. He used this title to advance his political position, but of course all that was meant, all that was meant was that he was the son of a god, a deified ancestor. Christ, though, claimed to be the only son of the one and only God. Nothing like this had ever been heard of or imagined in the history of God's chosen people, and there was no exact parallel to it in the vagaries of polytheism, be they Roman, Greek, Egyptian or whatever. The leaders of the Jews saw perfectly clearly that in speaking of God as his own personal father, Jesus was making himself equal to God, and so they sought even the more to kill him as we read in John chapter 5 verse 18. The point is that this is and was the preeminent fact about Jesus of Nazareth and the devils in our gospel scene that I read earlier were wide awake to it. We read that, and I quote, when the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people shouting, you are the son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Christ. The entire underworld was filled with consternation at this new arrival. They were now confronted with the one who transcended all and before whom they were powerless. The broken and suffering world, ultimately the work of Satan and sin, that is to say their brokenness and the sin, was now being reshaped by a hand stronger than any other force in the universe. Jesus Christ was and is all-powerful because he is the Son of the living God, equal to the Father, and sharing fully the Father's nature. What a tragedy it is to fall away from him. Let us take our stand with him then and fight to the finish.